G'day folks and welcome to part one of a three-part basic introduction to aquaponics video series I filmed for a live presentation over on Stephen's Potent Aquaponics YouTube channel. In part one of the series, we're going to be covering the basics of what is aquaponics, chat about the nitrogen cycle, and also how you can create your own in the aquaponic system you wanna grow fish and plants in. Once we've learned about cycling the system, we're gonna move on to look at how an aquaponic system works, plumbing wise that is, along with some DIY examples of small systems made using readily available fish tanks, the little glass jobbies, and containers that you can buy from retail outlets. From there, we're going to do a quick walk through the construction of a chop and flip flip aquaponic system. You'll see them commonly on a lot of social media sites. So without any more nattering on, let's jump right into a brief explanation as to what aquaponics actually is. Hope you enjoy the show, folks. Introduction to aquaponics. I've pretty much all figured I would start off with what is aquaponics for you folks who really aren't familiar with what aquaponics is. It's the merging of both aquaculture, which is the farming of fish in either wild environments in cages, pens, or tanks, and also the growing of hydroponic plants in a soilless medium. Luckily enough, uh, aquaponics has a couple of little friendly helpers that gets them to work together, and that's the bacteria. The bacteria pretty much will are uh, the driving force of aquaponics. You have a couple of different varieties. You have ammonia oxidizing ones that will oxidize the waste generated by the fish, both ammonia and ammonium, into nitrite. And then you have nitrobacter and other nitrite oxidizing bacteria that will then convert that nitrite into plant available nitrate, even though there are other forms of nitrogen that are plant available as well. And they're all part of a happy ecosystem, and it's pretty much all the bacteria that get the aquaculture and the hydroponics uh, working together. The cycle is pretty basic. As you can see, you have some fish food. You feed that to the fish. The protein within that food is converted into waste ammonia and ammonium, which is excreted out of the fish's gills. And then the bacteria get to work with nitrous ammonas and other bacteria converted to nitrite. And then again, the nitrobacter and other bacteria converted into nitrate. It's available to the plants. It's clean from the water and it's safe for the fish to basically swim in that environment due to the low nitrate levels. When we set up our aquaponic system, we pretty much will have to create our own little nitrogen cycle. And we're doing so by adding an ammonium source. The popular ones are things like ammonium hydroxide, which is cleaning ammonia with no perfumes or surfacants or soaps in it, anything like that. Ammonium chloride, which is big in the aquarium trade. There's a couple of branded products that are based on this. And you can even use things such as Charlie Carp or fish emulsion, which is made from a pest species here in Australia. And I think Maxi Crop is a version of fish emulsion over in the States. And you can also use the fish feed you intend to feed the fish themselves, basically by dosing the system with the uh, same amount you'd be feeding your fingerlings or new fish on a daily basis to create that cycle. Now, what you will need is a test kit so you can monitor the elevation of the ammonia within the system and know how the cycling is going, the cycling process. Can take anywhere up to a couple of months, depending on your climate, uh, where you live, the heat, and also the ammonia source. For our climate here, we're in the subtropics. You can see up there, day one, we got an ammonia reading pretty much well straight away. Day four, the ammonia had pretty much well disappeared. That's probably because I was using some recycled medium from an earlier system, but we got a spike in the nitrite which went up to around about, I'd say, between 0.25 and 0.5 parts per million. And we started to see a little bit of nitrate um, accumulate in that end test. And then day seven, the nitrite climbed higher, so did the nitrate. And by day 14, we only had trace amount of ammonia, which is something you will find in most aquaponic systems. Zero nitrite, which means those bacteria are getting in there and doing their job, and elevated levels of nitrate. So pretty much all by those readings, I could tell the system was cycled. And this chart down here gives you a little bit of an idea on what goes on. You get a raise in your ammonia level until the bacteria kick in and start to oxidize the nitrite. And around about the same time, you get those nitrite oxidizing bacteria coming in and raising the nitrate level. 
And yeah, once you see the levels drop right down, you know your system is pretty much well cycled. And there's a couple of easy ways to kickstart the system. Like I mentioned, I had old media, which had a little bit of bacteria already on there. So I kickstarted the system that way. So if you know someone with a system already or a healthy aquarium, even get some of that filter material or some media from their system, pop it in your grow beds and away you go. A uh, little bit of a kickstart of that cycling process. So that's pretty much all how you started out to look after the ammonia, uh, the nitrite and the nitrate. Um, so the fish can live in a friendly environment, but there's other microorganisms and biota in the systems as well. You'll find they naturally occur when you plant your seedlings in, if they've been grown in a compost mix. And the addition of compost worms, which we use to chew through the leftover roots in any organic matter that has fallen on the surface of the beds, they will also have some of these microorganisms on them. Things like protozoa, nematodes and even fungi they can occur in aquaponics as well sometimes they're introduced and sometimes they'll just turn up out of the blue most people by the way don't test for these sort of things don't look for the samples but it is possible to find them in systems now just quickly folks i've got some great news for you people who are really enjoying the video series picking up a couple of pointers and getting really curious about aquaponics i do have an online backyard aquaponics for beginners guide available 1995 us it includes a lot more in-depth looks at not only how you can cycle a system, but a load of tutorials on building components like bell siphons, solids filters, a couple of them, a small little IBC chop and flip system. Not only that, but a couple of pointers on nutrients, plant selection, and common ways to keep pests and bugs from eating your veggies just to keep it all organic. Now, a big bonus with the guide is you can actually ask me questions directly and get them answered a lot faster than you would if you were to leave a question down below these videos here on YouTube. As I said, the guide is 1995 US and it is available via the link down in the description and another one will appear at the end of the video as well. Now, just a quick heads up, I also have an online shop that includes affiliate links for you folks that would like to buy a couple of aquaponics products that I use and also sell. And while you're there, check out the fantastic Queensland Nut Buster Nutcracker, handmade right here in Australia. Great for mackers, walnuts, hazelnuts, and all those sort of things. But that's enough of me spruiking, trying to pay the bills. Let's get back to the aquaponics. Next up, how a basic aquaponics system works. It's pretty easy, really. We've got a load of fish down in the fish tank and they're excreting ammonia plus other solid waste out the other end. And that is being picked up by a pump of some description and delivered into a grow bed. Now, this grow bed provides the home for the bacteria. The bacteria are living on the media itself. They're being supplied food. They're being supplied oxygen as the beds flood and drain, if it's a flood and drain bed, or from the well oxygenated water in this fish tank. And from there, the bacteria convert the ammonia all the way through to nitrate, where it is taken up by the plants. And ultimately, that nitrate is removed from the system as we harvest it for our own consumption. So it's a pretty basic, easy cycle to follow along. It's just imperative that before we add fish to most systems that we do set up this nitrogen cycle so we can look after all the ammonia and ammonium uh, generated by the fish. Now, to make your own little backyard aquaponic system, it's pretty basic. There's all sorts of equipment you can use. Old fish tanks, now loads of people uh, use old fish tanks. A food grade suitable plastic, uh, whether it's a concrete mixing tray, some sort of storage tote and or some sort of large tub. They're great for starting off small little aquaponic systems, either on verandas or on decks or patios, whatever, or even inside under lights. But do try and make sure that they are UV stabilized and also that they're made from food grade plastic. And these are just a couple of examples of the sorts of things you can make from these little tanks and whatnot. Over here on the top left-hand corner, uh, we have just a basic little tote system. It is a uh, couple of totes, one a little bit smaller than the other, a little goldfish down the bottom there, clay balls with a bell siphon, very cheap to make. Uh, this one here was a picture sent in by Lewis. Again, a larger tote down the bottom with a bit of shade covering for the fish. And then the water is pumped up through a little canister filter at the back there. And then that overflows into a media bed, which by the looks of it, has a little bit of a flood and drain style bell siphon on there. And Gurkhan here in Australia, he's basically set up a little tray over the top of his fish pond, aerated nicely through a little waterfall that overflows into the pond itself. So even ponds in the backyard can be utilised into aquaponic systems. Our mate Anthony, he set up this aquaponic system in his kitchen, basically a nice long aquarium down the bottom. 
and then go straight up into a grow bed and you might be able to see some lights up there. I think they're a spider farmer light, LED light that illuminate the grow bed right there in the kitchen, right next to his fridge. And a couple of more aquarium examples, pretty basic flood drain looking jobbies. Some are just bench top units. Others, you can actually build a nice little um, arrangements to go around them to get them fit into the decor. And this one from Jayandra here, also in Australia, a basic little aquarium down the wall, a little feature with some pots that run from one level down to the other, all the way back down into the fish tank. So there's many different ways you can set up these little aquaponic systems if you just want to get your feet wet with a little trial run with fish tanks or totes or whatever. Now, if you want to go a little bit bigger, you've got things that are, make it a little bit cheaper, things like the recycled drums, 50-gallon, 200-litre drums, smaller ones. That one there's about a 50-litre, probably about a 12-gallon drum. IBC totes, generally around about 265 gallons or 1,000 litres, or even though you can get some a little bit larger. And you can find these on places like Craigslist and over here in Australia, Gumtree and places like that. I've picked up IBCs as little as 50 bucks each. Anywhere up to this black one here cost me about 150 each from memory because they are um, UV stabilised and no light can penetrate which just makes them a little bit easier to work with later on down the track when there's a lot of nutrient-rich water in there. A few examples of little barrel systems. This was our first aquaponic system, actually, made by barrels that were washed up through the 2011 floods we found around the place, washed them out and turned them into a couple of grow beds. And down the bottom, we had another 50-gallon, 200-litre barrel, and that hosed a host of goldfish and some yabbies and just created a small little basic flood and drain system. Water enters in the back, and just when the um, the bell siphons were triggered, it just flowed directly down into the base. Down here, we've got a little chop and flip jobby. It's a barrel. You chop the top off, flip it over, a little inlet on the left-hand side, a bell siphon on the right-hand side, and just the water cycling through. And not, a, not something I'd throw fish in, table fish as such, just a little ornamental fish. And yeah, it grew us a load of herbs and greens. That one was actually cycled using urine, which you can also use as a fertilizer as well. We cycled that one with urine before the fish went in. Took off nicely, as you can see, some very, very green looking plants there. And over here, we have a submission from Chris. He did a chop and flip barrel, slightly different due to the top of the barrel that he was using. But the barrel down the bottom actually has some goldfish in it. And he was growing a couple of strawberries up the top, just in some river rock. And it grew very well for him. In fact, I think it's still growing to this day. Next, some slightly larger examples using those totes. Here, Andrew's got a little chop and flip system inside under some LED lights. Basically the same idea. You get the IBC, you chop the top section off, you set it up above the base, which becomes a fish tank, and you pop a couple of fish in there, a bell siphon in the front corner, and basically floods and drains under lights. Kim went a little bit further. She actually used, by the looks of it, the base of another IBC to create a grow bed on top of a whole IBC uh, with a little canister filter in the corner there, which you'll see in a minute. And that basically turns into a larger fish tank, something you could throw a few more fish in as long as you've got enough biofiltration to look after the waste. The Steve Lee over here, he's basically made a chop and flip, clad it with some old pallet boards by the look of it, make it look a little bit more schmicko. And Teal's made up one using a whole IBC with an extra grow bed off to one side uh, just to utilise the amount of waste that the fish will generate because you'll find even in a small little tote system like this, they generate more than enough waste to um, run probably around about two square metres or 18 square foot of grow bed, or especially greens as they're not very nutrient demanding. Over here, chop and flip, just run through the steps. You basically get an IBC, chop the cage off, chop a top section off the IBC itself. You can either take out a small section, depending on what you want to do with it later, or just leave it nice and tall. I'll pop the grow bed on the top using some timber slats underneath, using the cage saved from the first chop. And you have a fish tank down the bottom, uh, pump in one corner. I like to use bell siphons just to regulate the amount of air that goes down through the media. And then you plant it out with some plants on top and pop a couple of fish down the bottom. Pretty simple. Takes an afternoon to knock up. And I think this unit here uh, cost me Australian around about $200 before I bought the clay. You can use river rock, which is fairly cheap. The clay, I think, set me back around about $350 for that. So I bought the total up to around about 500 bucks. 
So if you use recycled things, you know, only comes in about a couple of hundred bucks if you're using the suitable river rock. With those tanks, the IBCs, as I mentioned, they can be opaque, lending some UV light in there. Because we're dealing with a lot of nutrient in there, we can cause algal buildup on the walls. So here's a couple of examples on how we've clad them or shielded them. I've used a uh, paint on the outside, very hard to get it st to stick on there. Some people swear by sanding a little bit and then uh, painting on. For some reason, now stuck for about four or five years, so it worked really well. I painted the surfaces of the sump tank, the grow beds and the fish tank. Over here, our aquaculture system uh, looks like something that's um, landed on Mars, basically used sarking from a house because it was available at the time, just wrapped it in that, and that kept the UV light out. Some of that sarking still exists to the to today. It's held up really well, so we're looking at around about eight years' worth of exposure there. Ben clad his in old pallets, as you saw with the chop and flip before, a couple of linked IBCs there, close it off, give them a bit of shelter. And Owen used some of that little reed landscaping material just to clad his. Looks rather nice if you're into that sort of thing. So there are ways you can shield it from the UV and also make it look a little bit nicer. So that's it for this episode, folks. In part two, we'll be covering the filtering of the solids waste generated by the fish. Also look at a couple of basic DIY filters that you can knock together to collect those solids. A couple of different system configurations for multiple grow beds and the plumbings and tools needed to construct the systems and the bits and pieces. Now, don't forget that I do have that very helpful backyard aquaponics for beginners guide available, 1995 US. And it's really tailored for you folks who would like a little bit more in-depth look at aquaponics and building your own backyard system. So with all that being said, I really do hope that you have picked up a tip or two from this video and I will see you in the next one. Cheers folks and happy growing.